So we've got our little mushroomy orange explosion going on. Um, before I start sort of tweaking the settings and trying to make this a bit more interesting, I'm going to just make sure, uh, well, I'm going to add a cache node so that I can cache this simulation out and you know, I can replay it rather than just playing through and then rewinding it and disappearing. Um, so I'm just going to hit tab inside the graph and write file. And we get a file cache. There we go. Um, and this has a few settings, but we don't really need to worry about these ones at the moment. Um, so it's got four modes, lazy read, write, and pass through. Pass through means it's ignored. Write obviously means it's writing to the cache. That's reading the cache. And this lazy mode means that it's, if you cache a certain amount of frames and you're in lazy mode, when you rewind, it will play through those frames, and when it gets to the frame where there's no more cache, it will start caching again. Um, this sort of it could be quite really handy, but it, it's I've not been even using it because it basically, when I sort of stop a cache, I'm generally going to change a parameter, so it sort of makes this not really work. So I've just been using the read and the write at the moment. Um, so let's just connect that up. So what I want to do is. Let me just show this. So at the moment we're coming out of the simulation and we're going into the material. Um, I'm going to place my file cache between the material and the simulation. If you do it after the material, um, I think it, it doesn't cache any of these material properties. So what will happen is when you go to write, I mean to read, what how it works is, is it basically ignores everything upstream from it and just starts reading in the thingy. So this would be ignored. So you wouldn't have any sort of material on your cache or cached out play uh, Bifrost simulation. So I'm just going to drag that into there and then drag that into there. And at the moment it has this sort of parameter set to the home project which is the Maya default on your in your documents I think it is um, I don't want that I'm gonna place it to somewhere else um, so I've got a folder here I've made in my BG explosion cache which I've called Bob uh, dot Bob is the or BOB is the file format that Bifrost use for caching um, and inside here I've already tried to test cache so I'm just gonna Select the address bar, copy that, copy that into here. Let's just drag this out a bit more so we can see it. And so I've got the file structure where I want it to go, and I just need now to give it the name that I called it before. Rename, just copy that. And replace that there with that. Uh, make sure, I think, I've, uh, what have I done on there? Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I accidentally got rid of one of my slashes, and the slash denotes that it's a folder structure. So I just make sure I put that back in, um, and change that to. I'll change it to read for the moment because I've already cached it out, so we can see it. So we've got our file cache there. Comes out. Simulation arrow goes into our material. If I rewind now, um, is that going to work? Should do. Should be able to jump through. Ah, right. So I've got a little problem here where because I've slightly changed this structure. This is erroring. When they go red, it means they're not working properly. Um, and I'm not 100% sure why it does this, but sometimes when you change the, the sort of network, the output stops working. And I think it's to do with what's being fed in here changes. And this output is set to be something else. So if this does go red, what I would recommend is you just right click and delete the port. 
and then just reconnect and you should get that so now we're reading that cache so you can see I can just jump through here um, every time you reconnect to this you do make new BIF objects so I'm just going to delete those first too I don't need those um, right so I've got this cached uh, out and um, I did a little test of it just so we could see it from before and this is what we've got so far for the first 60 frames um, you get some nice little sort of movements here but it's not very explosive um, one of the other things to sort of just mention while we're looking at caches is um, it starts off quite small it's only five megabytes but by the end of it at frame 64 it's already sort of half a gig um, and it will get a lot bigger than that if you let it run on um, and that's something to be aware of you can end up with massive amounts of data which can sort of slow everything down um, so one of the ways you can control that is controlling the resolution um, which I'll talk about in the next video